So yeah, but you know, Africa is not like isolated. We mm -hmm. there th there is like a global community of web free developers. Yeah. And how do you feel? Is there like good level of collaboration, or if there is something that you know we can do more to okay. support Africa? Um, I mean, of course, there's always opportunity to do more. Mm -hmm. um, but I think in terms of collaboration right now, I think there's a pretty good level. So you see a lot of blockchain engineers in Africa who also work for companies, say, in the U.S. or in the U.K. Um, or in Dubai, for example, right? Um, and that's because, you know, there's a lot of talent on the continent, right? Um, and, of course, if you're getting developers from the continent, it means that there also has to be some kind of handshake or some kind of collaboration with, um, you know, groups, organizations on the continent who are pushing these things forward. Um, I, like I said, the last blockchain conference I was at in Nigeria, um, it was sponsored by Silo, the Silo chain, right? Yeah. Um, so there is a lot of, and the Silo, Silo also has like an African DAO, DAO as well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, my friend is also a part of that. Um, there is a lot of collaboration between um, the people on the ground on the continent and mm -hmm. also the organizations that are abroad or, or across the world. Um, and I think that we need to see more of that Right, we need to see more of them trying to say, hey, like you know, what's going on um, on the continent, and trying to contribute to that. And that's also like part of my role here as well. How do we look at the MENA region, right? And how do we have more engineers building on Tezos from those regions too? So I think there's an opportunity for a lot of collaboration, uh, mm -hmm. and that's part of like what what I'm also here to do. Brilliant, Ama uh, amazing. So let's talk about the trends, like emerging okay. trends. How do you see it and what's the future and, what, and what's shaping the future at the moment? Um, I mean, right now, I know there's a lot of talk around AI and machine mm -hmm. learning. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely one of the things that, that we should keep an eye on for the future. But I think that, you know, the blockchain is going to be here. For, the blockchain is the future, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think that more and more people are going to realize that there are so many things that we need to decentralize. Um, and there are so many things that need to be on the chain and not with, you know, central governments or central banks and, you know, and I think that there's a lot of opportunities for that right now. And for me, the future is going to be um, DeFi, mm -hmm. right? Um, gaming and NFTs on the blockchain. Um, and I see a lot of opportunities for that even today. Like I already mentioned cross-border payments earlier. But how do we drive financial inclusion? There are some of these um, topics that come up over and over and over again. And there are things that the blockchain can solve very, very easily, right? Um, yeah, so definitely see a lot of opportunities in DeFi mm -hmm. um, and also in the NFC space because there are a lot of artists in Africa. Um, yeah, I think th those two spaces for sure, um, uh, for me, are where I see opportunities and also where I see the future mm -hmm. as well. Because I, I, like I said earlier, it, the more use cases we have for the chain, mm -hmm. um, the more adoption that we would see right, for, for blockchain and for Web3. Brilliant. Okay, so the future is bright, let's mm -hmm. say, but yeah. what are actually the challenges? Yeah, um, I think the challenges would be getting more engineers, mm -hmm. right? Um, we need to build more engineers. We need to train more engineers. Um, and that is, that is a challenge for, like, education, right? So even from high school, how do we get into the high school curriculum to start to teach kids some technical skills? Uh, maybe they need to build, like, a, a small robot in school, right? Or they could build, like, a, they could maybe make their house, control these switches in their house with a Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. Right, so start to teach technical skills from from high school, uh, from primary school, um, and then eventually kind of have like a boot camp or have like organizations that are running programs to make them into Web three engineers uh, or blockchain engineers or product managers um, or designers. Right, so I think that those are the challenges. I think that the major challenge is going to be education. Yeah. Of course, funding is a big thing, but I think that number one for me would be education. Right, we need to educate more people. Mm -hmm. We need to develop more people, um, and and I think from there we'll start to see more techno more technologies being developed around use cases that actually need to be solved. Okay, brilliant, but. All of that should mm -hmm. be also supported by the governments, yeah. by regulatories. How it um, uh, it works in Africa? Probably you know it's like different regions, different yeah. um, regulations. But tell me, like overall, if um, um, there is like a big acceptance towards mm -hmm. uh, Web three, or there's like hesitation yeah. from the political side of things. Um, I think that governments are trying to understand it. Mm -hmm. They're still in that phase where, um, of course, of course, early adopters have already adopted 
cryptocurrencies and, and blockchain, right, and Web3, and we love it, right? Mm -hmm. But for governments, you know, they're very slow to adopt technology. Um, but I think a lot of them are also very open to it. Um, I, in very, very recently, I think in 2021, um, we saw the launch of the e Naira in Nigeria, which mm -hmm. is the central bank digital currency. Um, and I'm seeing more and more countries, and I think even South Africa and Kenya, they're experimenting with these digital currencies as well, and Ghana too. Um, so, yes, while there's slow adoption from governments, um, I think that the more they experiment with the technology, the more they understand it, the more they would allow, you know, for this current for this um, for this technology to thrive and to work on the continent, right? And try to basically scale back regulation, or maybe they need to add some small regulations around around um, the blockchain, around you know, um, f just for people to adopt the technology and to use the technology. But I think that governments are closed minded, uh, as far as I've seen on the mm -hmm. continent. They are not closed minded. They are experimenting with it. They are trying to see what the possibilities are, trying to see what the regulation should be as well. Um, but I definitely see that um, I think in the next decade or so, we should see more and more adoption by central banks um, on the continent and even by governments on the continent as well. Okay. All right. It's good to hear that, actually, yeah. that, you know, it's like very progressive in yeah. many different um, ways. Mm -hmm. So like wrapping up, like what do you think? What are the most exciting opportunities at the moment for, for, for the future uh, of blockchain in Africa? Yeah, I, I think I also mentioned that earlier. I think DeFi. Um, also, I say DeFi a lot because so my background is in fintech. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I was working at a startup. Um, I'm building. I was building a startup alongside the co-founders um, back in Nigeria, and I see a lot of opportunities across Africa in terms of cross-border payments, in terms of um, banking for people, and, and kind of bringing people into the. Um, financial ecosystem, right? So I see massive opportunities for DeFi um, on the blockchain um, and then also for NFTs as well um, because they're, they're just a lot of artists on the continent, mm -hmm. right? And I see an opportunity for them to be able to um, sell their their works in other countries, right? Mm -hmm. Using using NFTs and using cryptocurrencies. Um, yeah, so I think that for me, that, that's that's where I see, I see this going. So basically things that are useful for people, mm -hmm. um, I, they would always want to be invo involved in it. So DeFi, um, of course, like I said, out verification or land verification and NFTs as well. Okay. So uh, what would you say to um, aspiring blockchain developers in Africa? What would be your message to those young people wanting yeah. to become an engineer? Just start. That, that's really it, right? Um, just, just get started because you will never know how much you can do until you start. Right. So, yeah, that, that would be my message. Yeah. The journey starts with the very first yeah. step. All right. It was a huge pleasure, Adebola, to, to speak you, to Beata. you. I've learned a lot. Yeah. And actually, I feel very, very positive now <laughs> because like, wow, like world is progressive and, mm -hmm. and, you know, learning about Africa and the possibilities and actually the use cases that are already there yeah. is like very positive for yeah. me, especially. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Thank excited you. too. Excited for the future. Excited for the work that we're going to be doing here at Trillitech and how we're going to be pushing the Tezos ecosystem forward too. Yes, let's do it. Yeah. All right. So that's it for that video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, hit that like button below. And if you want to learn more about African uh, blockchain scene, uh, yeah, just drop a comment down below below of what you want to uh, learn about, and Adibola will be uh, your person here to prepare the content that you are interested in. So stay tuned for more and see you next video. Bye.